Well, a subvariant of the Omicron of, of Omicron is becoming more common in the United States. Researchers are keeping an eye on BA2, that's what it's called, which started spreading across the country earlier this year. So joining me now is the director of the Center for Infectious Disease Research and Policy, Dr. Michael Ulsterholm. Thanks for joining us. So, doctor, Thank you, you know, good morning. Good morning. We're coming back to the office. We're throwing off our masks in most circumstances, not all. And here comes another variant. What do we need to know about this variant? How concerned should we be? Well, I think any comments we make about it have to be prefaced with one very important word, and that is humility. Mm. Uh, we're not sure. And if you look at what the experience is right now in Europe, you can see that some countries where BA2 is increasing, and we do know it is more infectious than BA1, you'll see case numbers actually increasing. However, we have other countries where case numbers have increased where BA2 wasn't responsible, meaning that it wasn't at that time going up. And we have some countries where BA2 is common, and yet case numbers are not high. So at this point, I think it's just a little too early to say it's something that's very important that we keep on our eye on and we will have to keep the public informed about what it's doing in the days ahead. So then what's your sort of practical advice for you know everyday people like me um, who you know find myself taking off my mask in areas that maybe I wouldn't have six or seven months ago. Is it okay? Well let's just be really clear about where we're at today. Uh, the society has decided where we're at with COVID, mm. not public health. And when I, what I mean by that is, is that it was the governors that began relaxing many of the restrictions that had been put in place earlier uh, this spring uh, without any real scientific data, just a sense that the public was done. They were reading the tea leaves. And I think that's still the case. So don't expect that the public is going to respond with maybe any changes at all should uh, BA2 become a bigger problem. So what that means is and for those individuals who have a, the high likelihood of becoming seriously ill if they become infected, those who are immune compromised, the older population, people with certain underlying health conditions, you have to take it upon yourself to number one, make sure you're fully vaccinated. Make sure you have all three doses. And today, uh, you know, we're talking about a fourth dose and mm. that may be a possibility in the days ahead. Make sure that you're wearing high quality masking. Wearing a face cloth covered in front of your face is nothing more than decoration. You have to have a highly effective mask that you wear. And so if you do those things, you can protect yourself. But for many, they're going to go through life right now saying we're done with the pandemic and this is what we're going to do. We're going to live life. You know, I think it's a good reminder that in and it, it's a case by case situation. You know, you have to look at your own health. You have to look at the environments that you're putting yourself in and determine, you know, how you should behave and move. Um, so I haven't got a chance to talk to a doctor in a while. So I have a bunch of different questions to ask you about. I want to ask you, <laughs> I want to ask you about uh, the latest data coming out of Moderna about its vaccine for younger kids. Um, we've learned that it's about 38 percent effective in preventing infection in kids ages uh, two to five. I think and and to me as a parent I thought geez that's a little low so you know it, they're asking for permission um, to move forward you know what advice would you give to parents who say geez that doesn't seem like much protection should I give my kid this vaccine well, when you look at protection from a vaccine against COVID, you have to look at really two components. One is, what does it do in terms of just preventing me from becoming infected? Which in this case, the vaccine is so-so. It's not a great vaccine in that regard. But then you have to also look at what does it do to reduce serious illness, hospitalizations, and deaths. And fortunately in kids, this occurs at a lower rate than it does in older individuals, but it still is a real problem. Mm. Uh, and so parents who want to have that level of protection for, for their kids, not just against getting infected, but they don't want to have to see their child in the hospital. They don't want to have to have to deal with a pediatric intensive care unit situation. So there the vaccine could be very, very helpful. And I think that's a message for everyone, not just young kids. Today, please get vaccinated with all three doses of the mRNA vaccine, maybe a fourth dose coming, uh, because in fact, even if it doesn't prevent infection, it can do so much to prevent you from being hospitalized, seriously ill, or die. And that's the message even for the kids. And listen, I just quickly, I want to ask you another question. What have we learned so far about long COVID? We, we sort of, there's this idea that these, some of these variants are not as, um, are not as intense. You're not going to get as sick. And so we sort of assume that long COVID is not a risk, but is it still a risk even with this new subvariant? 
Uh, again, I have to preface my comments with that very, very important word, humility. Mm. We are learning so much about long COVID right now. First of all, it is really a serious challenge, even for those who are mildly ill. Uh, several weeks later, they may develop these very severe uh, symptoms, brain fog, fatigue, uh, heart problems, lung problems. Uh, and so we are in the process of trying to understand just how often that occurs. It's estimated anywhere from three to 25% of the people who get COVID of any kind go on and develop long COVID. This is a huge number. And so this is a real challenge. We must do much, much more work in this area to understand what's causing this, what can we do to treat it with. And in fact, again, I come back to the vaccines. They are still your best bet against preventing long COVID. Get Getting vaccinated. All right, doctor, thank you very much. Thank you.